I am live. Hey, everybody, say hi when you get on. Let me know you can hear me. Tell me how your weekend was, what you're working on. And as always, give me just a minute or two to try and figure out where they're going to show me comments. Julie, you're on, but still working. Uh, just on call or are you like actually working, working? Hi, Trisha. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Joyce. Oh, hello, mother. Hi, Bonnie. Working on summer shandy. Excellent. Hi, Sherry. Is it hot enough for me? I love it. Um, Deb and I were just talking about that on the way in. I I do love hot weather. 91 is a little bit much, but I'm thankful I have cold air in my house to um, escape to. So I, I can't complain too much. <laughs> Hi, Tammy. Oh. So tell me what you did this weekend. Tell me what you're knitting or crocheting on right now while we... Um, Wait for a few people to join in. Hi, Charlene. Hi, Lisa. Here we go. Hi, Janie. We went to the big shoot, um, the fireworks in Bay City on Saturday. And I love fireworks no matter what, but I think one of my favorite things was to be with people that have not been in the area, just moved to the area and have never experienced the big shoot in Bay City. Uh, just to watch them watch the fireworks was so cool. Um, it's kind of like going to Frankenmuth. You, um, we don't realize because we're so close how much of a draw it is for uh, people that didn't grow up around here. Hi Beth, hi E. Charlene, ripped out the after the rain and starting over on track now. Good. Mom, knitting on your fireworks. Cindy, knitting on your fireworks. Oh. There we go. Sorry, I'm trying to get this and it's just, it's giving me a hard time. Joyce decided to do the whole scarf to show for class. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's going to be it's going to be perfect no matter what oh marcina working on the body of your summer sorrel excellent did you split for sleeves already um if you did then i can't remember what you said last week then it's just smooth sailing just keep knitting away jamie you are so welcome i was glad i was able to help you pick out some yarn for some projects and you're working on your fireworks, excellent. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Julie. All right, well, it's 7.01, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to Monday Motivation. I am Kristen. I'm the owner of The Little Yarn Shop located in downtown Saginaw, Michigan. Uh, I didn't know that there was more than one Saginaw, but I guess it does pop up every once in a while when I'm looking at the weather and they, um, it pops up Saginaw, Texas or something, but very much in Michigan. I like it this time of year. Uh, shop hours are Wednesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday motivation is every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. So join me and let's chat. So as you are, um, as you come on, if you didn't hear me yet, tell me what you're working on. Tell me what you did over the weekend. Oh, I, like I said, we went to the fireworks. It was awesome. I heard a lot last night. We live north of town, but I could hear them in every direction. We have too many trees though, to be able to just look out and see anything. So today is July 5th. Obviously yesterday was the 4th of July. And I know a lot of people are off today. So I'm hoping that enough of you will still hang out well. Four of you will still hang out and chat with me. Uh, let's see, what am I wearing? 
So a few weeks back, we talked about um, sort of like similar versions of knit things and crochet things. And this is one of those that I, um, I don't ever think I got around to talking about. So this is crochet. It is called the Ragnar Crochet Shrug. Uses two colors of fingering or sock weight yarn. Would be really good if you um, if you've been loving some of the yarns that I showed you, but weren't into making tops. This would be a great option, especially if you're a crocheter. Uh, let's see, Melissa said you're starting. You're slipping sideways since you forgot to bring. Yes, yep. Melissa got to cast on her slipping sideways top, and it looks really really cool. I like the contrast. <laughs> I don't know. Melissa forgot to pack knitting to come out of town to see family. I. I would forget to pack socks and underwear before I would forget to pack knitting, I think. <laughs> I would just have to knit myself some. Hi, Kathy. Thanks for joining. So this is done flat and I'll take it off to show you, but it does have this, you make a crocheted, kind of like a crocheted version of an I-cord so you can stitch it up. So it could be done, it is, knit, it is crocheted flat, but then you could make it more like a cowl. But it's got these little crochet short rows that makes it look like a little cape. It's done this way. And these are like the closest thing to bobbles that I don't mind. The crochet ones that are just little tiny, not even popcorn things, they're just little flippy things. Carrie, hi, swatching for your striped sweater. Excellent. So I have had this in the shop as a sample for quite a while. And for a little bit of time, I had the knitters of the group were a little bit disappointed because if they don't crochet, um, you wouldn't be able to do this. And it's not, it's not difficult, but it's definitely not a beginner crochet project. So the knit version or the closest I could find is the Urban Hero Shawl. And if you were one of those people that looks at the pattern on Ravelry and is either excited by what you see or not excited about what you see, you would probably, unless you really, really like neons, you would probably scroll right by. But look at how cool this is. So it gives you a very similar feel very similar shape as the crochet one, but it's knit. It's knit sideways this way. Also short rows, but a little bit of lace in there. So Melissa just posted a, a link to that pattern. And if you can, if you can see even just that little image, it's, it's bright. It's, I mean, it's supposed to be like caution construction yellow, but um, it's a really, really great, again, two skeins of fingering weight yarn. This one uses Malabrigo sock as the variegated and then a heritage as its contrast. Lots of really good ideas for either one of these. Oh, Melissa, that was the same with the Typhoon. Initial picture isn't appealing. Yes, yes, Typhoon with jo Josh Wrights. I think we talked about that when I had it back here for a little while, the orange with the big orange stripes. I need to make another one of those. Tammy, mine is much prettier than the picture. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, I tend to spend a lot of time looking at other people's projects, but that's, that's part of what I do. And the service that I provide to you guys is to find patterns that might not jump out at you right away, but I still think people will think is a really neat thing. Hi, Cora from Virginia, working on your fireworks sweater. So that's what I'm wearing. Everybody's talking about their fireworks sweater. So if you don't know, um, then you haven't been watching me for a few weeks, but that's okay. I will catch you up anyways. So Marie Green, who is the designer um, of my, she goes by Olive Knits. Every July, she hosts um, what she calls her four day sweater knit along. So she challenges people to knit a sweater in less time than they normally think they would. Uh, it's anywhere from like four to 10 days, depending on the size of sweater that you make. 
Um, the kickoff was July 1st last week. We uh, met over in the boardroom, had some appetizers and dinner and had a great little crowd over there. I don't know if you saw the picture that I posted, but we had a really great time. Hi, Mary. And one of the things that the girls there got to, got to see and take advantage of, but I realized that people that weren't there in person didn't get that same opportunity was that I had Sarah over at Purple Sage Beads here in the marketplace make up some cute little firework type stitch markers. So let's see if you can see those. Doesn't they look cute? So we're this pattern and each one is a little bit different, but it's two um, circular stitch markers and then one with a little lobster claw on it that you could remove. For this pattern there really, it doesn't require very many stitch markers. So, um, Really, all you need is two for at the most for the whole pattern. So I had her make little sets up. If you are interested in getting a set, they're five dollars each, and I've got I have a handful of them here. Like I said, they're all different colors, so it's just kind of assorted, but they look like little fireworks. Little fireworks, so cute. So that's fun. I will show you my. Still not blocked. It'll get there. Right now it's staying in the shop for people to use as a reference. Here's my firework sweater. Beads instead of bobbles. Two different colored yarns. Um, not necessarily intentional at the beginning, but different dye lots. What are you gonna do? Make lemonade. Um, for those of you who are knitting on the fireworks, Tell me what you think of it so far. Tell me where you are on your project. Um, it is a top-down seamless sweater. So you start at the collar, work your way down. There's nothing to seam up at the end. It's Marie's, the designer's favorite way to do sweaters. Um, as far as ease, it's definitely our favorite way to do sweaters. I have heard that if you knit a sweater in pieces and seam it together, it's got more structure to it, but eh. Sometimes that's necessary, maybe sometimes not so much. So yeah, tell me where you are. Um, her promotion goes the entire month of, I almost said February, <laughs> the entire month of July. So um, she also says, if you, you don't have to knit for consecutive days on your sweater, you could do one day this week, one day next week, um, just in a shorter amount of time. A lot of people, well, anybody who's participating is working on their fireworks sweater. Since I had mine done, I decided that I was going to cast on one of her other designs, one of Marie Green's other designs. The very first year that she hosted this five years ago, um, it was with a pattern called Stillwater. It's a cardigan. Uh, it's one that I've had customers come into the shop and wear, and I've really liked it. Mom, very slow, haven't knit the first firework yet. That's okay. It's not, it's not a speed. Well, I mean, don't get overly competitive. It's not like sock madness where you're gonna get eliminated from something, that's for sure. So still water is was her very first sweater that she did the first year of her knit along. Open front cardigan little mock cables. So it's not, it's not real cables, just little mock cables that are done with increases and decreases. Um, it's a great one that I've wanted to have in, on display in the shop for a while. So I decided that was going to be my project for this four day knit along this year. Clearly I didn't get very far. I cast on, I actually just, just split for the arms. I split the row and purled back and that's as far as I got. But this, isn't that beautiful? Look at that color. Don't look at my stitches because my stitches are very uneven. <laughs> um, I know, Melissa, this purple is gorgeous. I decided um, a lot of us used the um, Earth Yarns DK Yarn Harvest, which is a, it's a really squishy DK weight yarn. They're all naturally dyed. 
Um, the DK weight is a newer one for them. They've had a fingering weight and a worsted weight of that same yarn for a long time. So they have in their, in those two, they have a lot more color variety. So I decided I would use their worsted weight version for this. This is their blueberry color. So dyed with blueberries. My daughter actually saw it and she, before she even knew what it was, she said, it looks like when you smash blueberries. <laughs> it does look like when you smash blueberries, that's what happens. So I'm almost through my first skein. I am using my beaded row counter. It's having fun with my yarn right now, but my beaded row counter. I know some of you have heard me talk about these before, but um, up to this point, the rows were numbered. So I had like 37 rows to do. This helped me keep track of that. Now that I'm to the point where I am just knitting straight, no more increases or decreases. I'm just doing the 20, 20 something, let me see. 23 row repeat for the chart. And it's both written and charted. Um, I'm using this to not necessarily count all of my rows, just my, my number row that I'm on from one to 23. So right now I am on row, that's on my one, so that's a tens and two. So I'm on row 12, aren't they cool? So the little lobster claw one is up here right now, because that counts my tens. When it's on the one, it's tens. When it's on the two, it's twenties. And then whatever is on my needle, is the, the the one's place, I guess it would be. Tammy, I thought you might like that yarn. <laughs> Lisa, just cast on fireworks today, spent time swatching the fireworks pattern. Enjoy seeing the different colors that people chose. Excellent, yes, Cindy just passed the sleeve divide. Oh, you're smooth sailing now. <laughs> it is kind of fun to do that, just to keep keep going. As long as your gauge doesn't get messed up like mine did. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right, I, I apologize. My, my screens are jumping all over the place. So that's one of the things that I'm working on. I do, um, we, I know I talked about those row counters before. Um, I sold out very quickly. I did have Sarah over in the bead shop make more. So I've got, they're $20 a piece. She did this one really beautiful neutral colored one. But then I've got greens. Cora, you're gonna have to tell me if you've used yours yet. Lisa, I have yours here. Some pinks, look at the pretty pinks on there. I know it's hard to see through the packaging. Kind of orangey peachy one. There's something that this one's kind of like a multicolored one. So they have crystals on them. They have um, different beads. Everyone is completely different because Sarah just makes them as she pulls stuff out of trays, which I love. No two are going to be the same. They are $20 a piece. I think I said that. Let me know if you are interested. I, Lisa, I know we talked about it the other day and then I completely forgot. So. I apologize about that. Um, what else am I working on? I am working on my topography. Cora, yes, I use my stitch marker on another sweater. I am making, love the color green, good. And I even asked her to put a little leaf on there for you. No, oh, topographical scarf. I said topography, topographical scarf. Designed by the same person that does the butterfly shawls, which, I don't know if you can see them up there. There they are, up above me. Um, but I wanted something a little bit different and the yarn's a little bit heavier. So it, Julie, you want one? Yes, you should try one. Tammy, if there's no purple, I'll take a green one. <laughs> Lisa snagged the purple one, but I think I've got a purpley-ish one. Actually, it's purple and green. So I'll set that one aside for you. What I'm doing for my topographical scarf, I'm using this Harmony DK in one of their special edition hand-dyed rainbow colors. 
This is what it looks like in the stain. I just ran out of my first stain. Well, close. I have that much left. And it's looking beautiful. Look at how gorgeous that is. Oh, it looks even better on camera. The colors are so vibrant. My contrast color is a really, really dark navy. In the pattern picture, she's got it with um, kind of a uh, natural color and it's, it, it pops either way. It's just like the butterfly, depending on what you use for your contrast will make a difference in how it turns out. So it's mirrored in terms of the pattern. Let's see if you can see it that way. So this is the cast on edge and the short rows work toward the middle. Now I'm working back out with the short rows. I am so close to done. I have one section left, but these rows are so, so long. 310 stitches still every time. But I've gotten used to it now. And really what I like about this, just like what I like about the butterfly is your contrast color, which are my two rows with my dark color act as a lifeline. So if I make a mistake on short rows and can't figure it out, I can always drop back to that last contrast row because all you do is knit across and knit back. So it's like a lifeline without really having to be a lifeline in there. <laughs> Melissa, yeah, I got a lot done on it. <laughs> um, are you happy since you didn't flip the yarn color? Yes. So when I got to the middle of this, I'm holding it the other way now, but it went red to purple at just about the halfway point. And I debated on cutting my yarn and making it mirrored. So it started purple and ended in red. I decided not to do that. I just was, I just kept knitting with the skein the way it was. So I go back red to purple again. I didn't get, there wasn't a whole lot of purple. So it's probably good I did that. There wasn't a whole lot of purple on the outside of the ball. All I got was that little short row section with my tiny little bit that I had left. So we'll see when I join my new one. I'm not sure what I'm gonna get. I have to wind it first. So it does take more than one stain of your main color, uh, probably about one and a third, maybe one and a quarter, but you definitely need the rest of it. Mom, thank you. I think it's beautiful too. Uh, I'm working on a lot of things, you guys. <laughs> There's one project that I cannot show you. I got my first box of yarn for um, that was dyed exclusively for the shop that's going to be released for the I-75 yarn crawl at the end of the month. So I'm trying to furiously knit up some samples before then, well, a sample at least, because I got one box of one of the colors and it is gorgeous. I, I love it, I love it, I love it. I hope you guys do too. But um, like I said, I probably will, I'll probably give you guys a little sneak peek that week before the yarn crawl starts. So the yarn crawl starts on July 30th and goes through August 7th. <laughs> Melissa got a little sneak peek of it. I am putting beads in it, of course. Um, so I would be curious to hear from, from you all what, all three are fingering weight. One is going to be self-striping, I believe. Um, would it be more beneficial for you as a customer if you came in to see all three yarns knit up in the same project? Or would you rather see three different projects with a single stain of fingering weight yarn? Um, I'm curious on that. If you wanna see something different than a, than a scarf or a shawl, cause that's what I'm working on right now. Um, tell me what you'd wanna see. I, I will have ideas for sock patterns and hats or fingerless mitts. Um, but even, I, you could even do baby garments with it too. So if you guys have patterns that you like that are one or two skein fingering weight projects. I know we talked about a couple last week with um, the yarn I was showing, but. I'm curious 
Melissa, same project so you can see how the yarn colors work. Bonnie, three different projects. So this is going to be interesting. I'd love to hear what all of you say. <laughs> um, yeah, so tell me that. Bonnie says mittens, like actual mittens or fingerless mitts. I probably could do either with a hundred gram stain of, of yarn. I don't know if I'll be able to get samples of all three things knit up, at least with the other two, maybe I'll be able to get a decent swatch done. We'll see, I'm not quite sure when they're, when they're getting to me. So that's the one I can't show you, but I am working on my slipping sideways, slow, slow progress on this one because it's on little tiny needles. Plus I'm working on a couple other things, but it's not gonna get put on the back burner. I, I really, I really like this and I wanna see it when it's done. Lisa, same project, three colors, regular mittens, Tammy, actual mittens. Okay. Hmm. So yes, the slipping sideways pullover. I started this a couple weeks ago, uses a, well, I'm using a variegated fingering weight yarn with a, Salad, these two. This is the Heritage Paints. Nope, Heritage Silk Paints and Heritage Solids, the regular Heritage Solids. Um, I do still have some of the silk paints available that I showed last week. So if you missed out, go back and look at those because there's of course a special, um, a special price for people that watch the video. And this takes two or three of your main color and two or three of your contrast color, I believe. Melissa will maybe verify that. Maybe it's two or three of your main color and one or two of your contrast color. I'm not sure. Um, I've had some people choose the variegated as their main color. Some people have chosen solid as their main color. Either way, it's really, it's just slip stitches, just like stripes and slip stitches. That's, that's all I'm working on right now. There we go, two or three of them in the main and one or two of the contrast. Okay, thank you. She's always on the ball. I did wanna show you what Victoria has been working on, my daughter. I asked her if she was coming here tonight to hang out with me and she didn't wanna do that very much. Driver's Ed started today. <laughs> That's a little scary. But she is working on her Nancho, which was the pattern released for um, Local Yarn Store Day last fall by Casapinka. It's designed to be in two colors or three colors. So Victoria is doing the three color version and she is using Malabrigo Susaro, which is their DK sport weight. So 50% silk, 25% merino wool, 25% linen yarn. We've talked about this a bit because it's fantastic for that vest. Can you see it over there? Ha ha ha, right there in the corner. Um, but I thought it'd be a good project, a good yarn for this project too. She's got it. We need to work on the length of things that she's got here. She's got a tiny little circular needle, but she's onto her second color. So she did the ribbing and she's onto her second color. So there's this mint green, this, it's, they call it sand bank. It's kind of a taupey color. And then the stripes are gonna be these two, the taupe and this dark green. It's so springy, I, it's summery. I hope she gets it done soon. I'm not holding my breath, but. I'm encouraging her to work on it more and more while she's here. Needle tubes, I got more of these in stock too. If you called and asked about them, they're $4 a piece. They have this little, they're metal tubes. They have this little rubber end here. It, you put, as long as you have size nine or smaller needles, you can put them right in there and it stays in place. So you don't have to worry about stepping on your needles or sitting on your needles or poking somebody or losing your stitches. Sometimes those little rubber stoppers can, can pop off. So those are pretty cool. 
So that's one of the things Victoria is working on. That's the only one that's here. That's her, that's her shop project. Uh, Melissa says ribbing is the worst. Anybody else? <laughs> I know, I feel like continental knitters don't mind it nearly as much as English knitters. So if you hold your yarn in your right hand and you and you throw or you flick, it's a little bit trickier. There's a little bit more movement to go between your knits and pearls than if you um, hold your yarn in your left hand and you're a continental knitter. Um, Bonnie though, Bonnie, I think is one of the people that just flicks her yarn with her right hand. So it's, it's probably pretty easy for her too. That is something I keep telling myself I wanna try and learn. I just haven't even gotten there yet. Bonnie, using that yarn for a summer sweat, sweater urchin by Libby Johnson. Mm. I love it. And because of the linen, it'll just, it gets drapey and, and softer the more you wear it. Um, finished. I did not finish anything. However, Deb finished her sweater she's been working on. Uh, it is called Malachite. And we got talking about sweaters with butterfly sleeves. And she actually already had this one um, in the back of her mind that she wanted to do. So it all worked out well. She used um, Cascades Roslyn, which is the wool and silk blend. It's got this tweedy look. This one's purples with kind of a pinky purple fleck in there. That's the silk. But look at the sleeves on this. Look at how cool that is. Little flutter sleeves. It's done in pieces. And um, then the sleeves are put in after the sleeves are done flat. And it's really cool the way they're done. It, it looks from a distance like it would be open this whole way, but it's not. There's this little side panel. One moment, please. <laughs> a little side panel in there that closes it up so it's not just a big open space all the way down and a little bit of lace. It's beautiful. Melissa, I need to commit to training myself to knit Continental, but I forget. <laughs> Lisa, that's why you learned to do Continental, yes. Um, I mean, nobody likes ribbing, I don't think. Maybe some people do. There are those like Tammy, people that are process knitters. They probably don't mind it as much as those who just wanna be done and on to the next thing. <laughs> So this is the Malachite tea. Again, she used the Cascade Roslyn yarn. I do still have a little bit of that left. That's what you can see down here. That is it. What's in those three little bins back there? That's all I have. They are, I think, two rows deep. So I have more than just one or two, but it's absolutely gorgeous. So that's Deb's finished thing. I'm glad somebody has a finished thing to show off. Hi, Denise. <laughs> um, okay, so that's everything that's done. One of the things I did want to talk about, um, if we're going to be talking about techniques on things, my purple sweater, the still water that I'm working on. I mentioned that I split for the sleeves. Some patterns will tell you to put the stitches on a holder. Um, some will say waste yarn or spare needle, depending on how it's, um, how it's written, they all kind of mean the same thing. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> Denise, I miss you too. So it's 90 here. I wonder what it is down in St. Pete's. I'm curious. Almost all the time, if I need to put my sleeves on something else, so I'm to the point where they just hang out here. I've joined underneath the arm and I'm just gonna continue knitting the body. These stitches I put on scrap yarn. So I ran, it's almost like a lifeline, ran scrap yarn through there. I try to always um, use a yarn that not only contrasts in color, but is gonna be a smooth yarn. So it's not going to, um, it's not gonna snag my stitches it, or it won't be hard to pick up my stitches when I go back there. The other part of that is I make it long enough that I can actually try on my sweater. That is the biggest benefit of top-down seamless sweaters is that once you get past that point, you can try it on, make sure it fits across the back the way you want it to, um, that the armholes are as deep as you want them, make sure they're not too deep. Um, so 
the best two ways to do that are either with scrap yarn, or if you are using interchangeable needles, you could put a spare cord on there. That's a little stiffer, so it's not quite as um, malleable in terms of keeping it out of the way. But um, I've had people come in and they've put the, their, their sleeves on scrap yarn, but they're bunched up like this, which does you no good. You can't fit your arm in there. There's no way you can try that on. Give yourself a lot of a, a lot of wiggle room in there. Why not? It's scrap yarn. It's not like you're using it for anything else anyways. Hi, Nancy. So that's one of the things I was thinking about today. Um, again, one of those things that I just I just do when I tell people to do when they're in here, but there are more of you here than can be in the shop at one time. Um, <laughs> What else? We talked about the knit along kickoff. I think that's it for projects right now. I imagine you guys want to see some new yarn. Maybe I have this box of Malabrigo sitting over here, including um, a new base of theirs. Well, new to the shop. It's new within the last few years, but new to me yarn that I have not carried here before. So um we can do that melissa new yarn yes always all the new yarn so like i said malabrigo i got the box last week i mentioned it because i was um i was coming in to do my live and i found the, the, the these boxes magically appear in my shop even when i'm not here <laughs> new yarn yes okay so let me clear myself some space here I got a few different um, bases from them. So I have, <laughs> of course, I skipped the new yarn. Okay, we can just be done. That's fine. Should we chat about the weather some more? <laughs> uh, hygiene. Oh, everybody loves Malabrigo. Uh, and, and of course, I'll be having more come because I keep having to order things for people. So I can't just order a couple of things, you know. So the first base that I got is Malabrigo sock. So I'm sure we've talked about this before. It confuses people that they call it sock because most people think sock yarn has um, nylon in it. This does not, it's 100% superwash wool. That does not mean you can't use it for socks. I still have plenty of customers that use 100% wool yarn for socks. Um, some people like the nylon in terms of durability. That's, I guess it's kind of a personal preference. And you guys tell me if you if you have a preference one way or the other. But even if you don't use it for socks, it's a fingering weight yarn. So it's beautiful for shawls, hats, sweaters, you know, something like this. So this is the first color I got is called water green. They put things upside down sometimes. Water green. Is that backwards? I feel like it's backwards. Maybe not. You guys tell me whether it's reversed or not because it looks reversed to me, but it's supposed to be changing things so you guys see it right. I don't know. So fingering weight yarn, 440 yards. 100% superwash wool. Josie, <laughs> no, no what? I need more than that. <laughs> oh, there we go. 440 yards, not backwards. Okay, good. Excellent. 1999 a skein. So there's water green. And I tried to go through and, and cut the bags open because it's such a difference when you see them in the bags versus when you see them out of the bags. You don't, you don't get to see that beautiful variation in there. Water green. If there is any yarn that you are interested in, you can put it in the comments, um, put what the yarn is, the color, how many you want, and whether you want me to hold it here for you to pick up or to ship it out to you. As always, I will try to post photos of all of these individually afterwards too. 
in case there's something you have questions about. But of course, once I'm done, you can always go back and watch again too. So that's water green. The next color is called Light of Love. I think maybe I've had this one before this color, but it's been a while. But look at that. Look at the variation in that pink. It's more pink than coral. So if you compare it to my, my coral fireworks sweater, you can see that this is much more of a bright pink. But it does have some of those kind of a more paley, peachy, corally color in there. Light of love. So, so pretty. And with Malabrigo, every skein is different. So if I pulled them all out, you would see some have really, really dark pieces. Some don't. For my orange girls, I got terracotta. Look at this. Sometimes their colors have a lot of variation. Sometimes they have not as much variation. This one is more of a solid, still gorgeous. And I love that because they are hand dyed, it's not, you can still see the layers that they put in there. Like if you look up here, you can still see the lights and darks. It adds a lot of depth to um, whatever you're working on, whatever the project is. So that's terracotta. Let's see, I was trying to go through kind of some of the semi-solids first before we got to the pretty variegated ones. So this is a little bit of both. This is Wales Road. This is by far one of, besides um, Anniversario, I would say Wales Road is probably the next best seller that I have. The blues and purples are just stunning. Some of it's so bright, some of it's so deep, but you get so much texture and depth from it. That's Wales Road. Sometimes I order reds just for Karen, my shop mom, Karen, because she does love her reds, but so does Elaine and a few of you others. So I, I keep you in mind. Look at this, this is Cereza in their sock. I have a darker red called Tiziano red. That's more of um, kind of like a brickier red. This is just red. Still that variation in there, variegation. Cereza, nope, sorry, upside down. <laughs> there we go, Cereza. There is another top that we haven't talked about before too that I was gonna try and get down and wear today, but it's way up high on a shelf. It's back in that back corner. You see that? That striped shirt. I know it's under um, it's under a shawl, but that is the elf E-L-F-E -E, shawl or top. It uses two different colors of fingering weight yarn and it kind of, um, the stripes go from thick to thin of the two. It's a really, really neat pattern. Um, I need to make another one of those. The whole time I thought it was cerveza. <laughs> no, sorry, not beer. <laughs> cerveza. And, oh. I thought this was more um, sock yarn, but it's not. This is the one bag of Arroyo in greenish blue that I got that is already spoken for, but I've got more coming. So nobody can have these, but I'm gonna show it anyway. It's beautiful. Look at that. Greenish blue, this is the color that Deb used in her um, Puget Sound pull over the one that had the, the color work yoke, the mosaic yoke across the front. So I ordered three bags, they sent me one. So more is on its way, but that one gets set aside. 
two colors of sock yarn left. Post yarn. Every time I get this yarn in, in every weight, whether it's in worsted or Arroyo, it, it, whether it's in reels or Arroyo or sock, it's different. Of course, you know, batch to batch, it's different too, but it's got so many different colors in it. I can't even explain. It's got like purples and greens and browns and oranges, which sounds really weird, but it, it's so rich, very kind of woodsy. Yeah, you can see kind of the, like the reddish oranges in there. Posyan. Um, this is a color that I probably would never have ordered until I had some roving, so for spinning on hand in this color and Karen spun it up and everybody fell in love with it. So then I had to get it in other yarns. Cora, love the green blue, yes. <laughs> if you Googled Ceresa, it would translate to cherry. Hmm. Some of them make sense to me right away. Some of them don't make sense. So tell me if that's true. And Arco Iris. I know I talked about Anniversario and in the sock yarn, I do have some of it up here, uh, right there. And a few others. That whole row right there is Malabrigo sock yarn. I didn't tempt you guys with putting Dreaming Color behind me this time. It's a lot of Malabrigo though. Arco Iris is it's like it's like a summer garden. Yellows, greens, these pinky reds, deep bluey purples. Sarah had a, Sarah from over in the bead shop had actually knit a poncho in this color and it was stunning um, to the point where somebody offered to buy it from her. And so now it's onto its new owner, but it's gorgeous. So Arco Iris. Tammy, your favorite. Which one's your favorite? Is Arco Iris your favorite? Oh, Anniversario. That's right, we talked about that. Okay, I got two colors of Mecha, which is their bulky. I don't know who is in charge of their names um, because their sock is sort of sock and their chunky is bulky and their Mecha is bulky. So this is 130 yards, 100 grams, 100% superwash merino. It's a single ply. I think single plies take color the best or the most intensely. So Wales Road, I'll show you the difference between that and whoops, the fingering weight one. So there's the sock, which is pretty. There is the mecha. So it's, what did I say? It's their bulky yarn. I have made um, mittens out of this. I have made baby little booties out of this yarn, sweaters. It's, it's squishy. It's gorgeous. Uh-oh, my AirPods are about to die. I got to swap them out. Hopefully this doesn't mess up too much. I hope not. Apparently I need AirPods that last longer than 45 minutes. Can you hear me okay, Melissa? Give me a thumbs up. All right, excellent. Thank you. Ha ha ha. Perfect. Okay. Ha ha ha. Yeah, things are sometimes a little delayed, but that's okay. I got it. 
All right, so that was Mecha in Wales Road. Oops, I missed the opening one. This is Mecha in, I don't even know how you would say it, Choi, C-H-U-Y. Actually, this color is what I have the samples knit up. Um, Tin Can Knits has part of their simple collection. At, there are some gloves in there. And what they do with their gloves and their socks is that they have it listed for multiple weights of yarn. Actually, they do it with the shawl in, in that simple collection too. Um, multiple weights of yarn. So no matter what you have, there's a pattern for it within it. And it's a free pattern. I can't remember the name of the mittens one but I took it, made one mitten like the pattern said, and then I made another one that I didn't finish and I just put a little bit of ribbing and made it into a little fingerless mitt. I'm gonna go grab that. I will be right back. See if I can do this without too much getting disturbed. Okay. All right, my little, my little hand models here. So there's the fingerless mitt. There's the mitten, same color as this. So you can see how it knits up. I, I mean, I'm a sucker for greens and blues. I did that sweater a little bit ago that was, um, color was called VA, V-A-A, and it was a similar, a similar sort of greens and blues. Jackie three of the Arco Iris. Okay, excellent. And I mentioned the little baby booties. Look at these little cute things. I don't even have a pattern for these. I, I mean, I don't know what the pattern was. I made them a little while ago and they just keep sitting on display. I need to make more little baby things, I know. Oh, there we go. World Simplest Mittens by Tin Can, Tin Can Mitts. So that is... It's always nice to see things knit up. I wish I could have swatches of every color. I just can't knit that fast. Okay, four colors of Rios, and then we'll get on to the new to the shop yarn. I was running low on some of my tonals, my solids in, in Rios. So Rios is the their worsted weight. Um, really for a hand dyed worsted weight yarn. Rios is a great option for um, more affordable projects and easy care, I guess you would say. It is a superwash, 100% superwash, um, 210 yards per skein. It, we've used it for all kinds of baby stuff, baby blankets, baby sweaters, baby hats, in addition to sweaters for us. Karen has knit, I don't know, 15 ponchos, I think, <laughs> using different colors of Rios. So this is Frank Ochre. It's this deep mustard, it's like stone ground mustard color. Lettuce. And I don't know if I've had this one, I've been looking for a good green. For some reason, I was thinking it was gonna be brighter than it is. It's got still these light and dark areas. It doesn't look as, um, neon's not the right word, but uh, it's just a really, really pretty green. Again, Ceresa in, Rios, gorgeous, gorgeous red. So there are two reds in Rios are, um, that are uh, seem to be popular with me is the Ceresa and then the Ravelry red. Ravelry red is kind of a, a, a brighter. The Ceresa is a little bit deeper, more tonal, still very, very beautiful. And Whole grain. Whole grain is one of those colors that 
Is it gray? Is it purple? Is it brown? It has little bits of all of those in there. It's, it's like a neutral, but not a boring neutral and could really, could really go with anything. And every, of course, every stain's different. Some of them even look more pink. Look at that, the difference in the stain. That's a prime example of Malabrigo right there. Understand that with Malabrigo's yarns, because they are hand dyed and they are dyed in big batches, they do vary a lot skein to skein. So um, if you're working on a big project and it doesn't bother you that when you join a new yarn, there might be a line when you change skeins, then just knit away or crochet away. If that bothers you, there are definitely ways, and I know we've talked about it before on how to alternate your yarns throughout the whole project or when you're getting close to the end of one. But yeah, if you were to use those two in just a straight stockinette project, you would see, you would see the difference. You can see it in the collar of my, my sweater. It's not a huge difference, but you can see it right across there where I joined the new one. One's a little bit grayer, one's a little bit more yellow. That doesn't bother me though. Not in that case. Okay, so new yarn. And um, you're gonna have to tell me if you have knit with it before, because like I said, this um, yarn that I have not had here in the shop before is called Caprino. It has been um, part of Malabrigo's line for I believe two years, maybe three years. So some of you may very well have knit with it and you've gotten it other places. It is, <laughs> this is the first time I've really even had it in my hands and it is just lush. Bonnie, love the lettuce. Sarah wove a scarf using lettuce. You wove? Mm -hmm. Cora, need Frank over to make your daughter a vest or a jacket. <laughs> Okay, we'll chat about that for sure, Cora. So again, Ceresa, if it's a good one, I get it in all the things. It's like shoes. If you find a pair of shoes that you really like, why not get all the colors? So this is, it's a 50 gram skein. So they're the smaller skeins, um, 164 yards, DK weight, 80% super fine merino, 20% cashmere. It is, it is lush. If you wanted to make a scarf that just hugged the person that you made it for, this yarn would be it. So they are $18 per skein for the 50 gram skein. Um, comparatively, if, if you look at what I have similar in 100 gram skeins from Dream and Color, it would be their um, Classy with Cashmere. And it's about the same price point, only those are 100 gram skeins. So if you wanted to do like a little color work project, these little 50 gram skeins are nice. I, I don't want to stop playing with it, but I have more colors. This is Pearl. Pearl is, it's probably the closest to a gray gray that Malabrigo has. It still does have a little bit of a purpley tone to it, but it's a good neutrally gray. That's the other color that Deb used in her Puget Sound. So it was these two colors. Look at that. So, so beautiful. Natural. Looks like natural. But again, this would be fun to use with any of the other colors doing some color work or stripes or, oh. I just wanna roll around in this stuff, you guys. Um, Anniversario, of course. And this one, sometimes Anniversario has a lot of yellow in it. Well, the batch I got up there has more yellow green. This is very pinky purpley. Gorgeous. This is like the very first batch of Melabrigo Rios that I ever got in the shop with Anniversario. It was like this. And Amy knit a sweater. It was gorgeous. 
we couldn't figure out what color it was. And when we realized it, the next batch I got was so yellow, it, you wouldn't even have thought it was the same yarn. But again, that's half the excitement. Ah, oh, I know it's so pretty, Melissa. Let me pull and I will show you. So that one is really dark. This one's got some of the lighter blues in there. And then some of the darker pinks. They're all so different. That one's got more of the greens. What you'll notice on a lot of Malabrigo's yarn is this. No dye lot. <laughs> that kind of absolves them from trying to match up anything to anything else. A good double knit. Ooh, that's a good idea. Oh, and that would be really, really cozy too, Melissa. Melissa said good double knit yarn. Mm -hmm. Two more. Carnival. Look at these speckles. Aren't they beautiful? That would look really cool with The red. Look at that. I love pairing speckles and highly variegated with tonal, with solids. It just makes them both look better, I think. Carnival. And this last one. Oh, I don't think I opened this one. I almost missed out on this one, you guys. Missed out on showing you. I don't even know how to pronounce it. I'm usually pretty good with Spanish. I took Spanish in high school, but it's Poipu, P-O-I-P-U. But look, look at this. My teal and turquoise girls, this is gorgeous. Kind of a pale bluey turquoise base. And then these kind of navy speckles. It's just, now I need to cast on another thing. <laughs> it's beautiful. Okay, I think that's all of my new yarn, all the new lovelies. Um, of course, you know, if, um, if there's anything you're interested in, message me or put it in the comments. I have a lot more than just this, obviously, in stock in Malabrigo. Uh, if there's anything that you want to know if we've got in the shop, if there's something specific you're looking for in a worsted weight or in a sock weight, uh, we're happy to text back and forth and send pictures or of course chat on the phone and we'll, we'll get you hooked up. I have a lot of yarn and a lot of really pretty yarn and I want it all to find good homes with you all. Okay, I think that's it for the week, for the day. I hope you guys have a great week. For some of you, it's probably gonna be a short week if you didn't have to work today. Um, I have to do this every Monday, but otherwise I get my Mondays free. It was a little bit frustrating that I couldn't do my banking and pharmacy and all kinds of stuff today, but that's okay, I understand. <laughs> Diane had to leave. Yes, you will have to watch the replay. Yes, please. So have a great week. I will see you all next Monday. Um, don't forget, uh, I did mention the yarn crawl is coming up at the end of this month. And um, the retreat is coming up in September, September 23rd through 20, hmm, what's the sixth, I think. I don't know. Hopefully Melissa can put a link to that or we can put, um, a, an event page up for the retreat too. And Joyce has a class that starts this Thursday, um, this Thursday from 10 to noon and second session is next Thursday, 10 to noon. So it's two classes um, on how to knit short rows as kind of the first step, but then also how to knit and curl backwards. So if you're doing things like the butterfly shawl or the butterfly scarf, um, you're not, constantly turning. Oh, I do remember somebody asked me if it would be better to start on the butterfly scarf or the or the the topographical scarf or the butterfly shawl. 
I would probably say the scarf only because your stitch count never changes. So you're not, um, you're not worrying about doing your short rows and moving your markers and doing your increases and decreases or increases. Um, with the scarf, you're, it is long rows, but it's always 310 stitches. So that makes your life a little bit easier. Those markers don't move. You can count at any time and it's gonna be the same. I hope that answered your question. Happy to help you pick out yarn because it's beautiful. And that one's written for DK or worsted. So you've got lots of options there. All right, thanks everybody. Have a great week. I will see you next week. Stay creative, stay crafty, and um, just have a great week. Bye everybody.